I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. As I pointed out last week, bonds are the hardest investment class for most people to understand. Just to make things more complicated, not all bonds are the same. There are great differences between government, corporate, long-term, short-term, tips, and high-yield bonds. Both governments and corporations issue bonds when they have a need to raise money. High quality bonds are those rated as unlikely to default. Most governments and large credit worthy corporations carry a small risk of default. <clears throat> if a country like the US, the UK, or Japan borrows money, there's no way they can default. Why? Because they can always print money to cover their debts. It's impossible for these countries to go bankrupt. However, a municipality or a state government, they can default on debt just as any corporation can or that you and I can. Why? Because we don't own a printing press. Another major classification of bonds, high yield bonds, can also be referred to as junk bonds. These are the bonds of governments and corporations that are having credit problems. Think of Greece. Because the risk of default is higher, these bonds sell for a large discount, making their yields higher than those of high quality bonds. Treasury and inflation protected bonds, uh, TIPS, are uh, usually government bonds that are indexed to inflation. So if uh, inflation goes up, the rate of return on the bond goes up. They usually pay a set interest rate of say 1% plus whatever the annual inflation rate is. If inflation rate would be 2%, the bond would pay 3% in that case. If the inflation rate rises to 5%, the bond would pay 6% that year. So the interest rate fluctuates annually depending on inflation. And finally, no matter what type of bond you own, it can be a short-term bond, an intermediate-term bond, or a long-term bond. It can also be a domestic bond that's one uh, uh, U.S. bond, or it could be international, which would be owed to you by uh, a foreign government or a foreign corporation. Short-term bonds usually mature and uh, Mature is bond lingo for when it becomes due, uh, usually in under three years. An intermediate term is three to seven years, and a long-term bond is considered anything that matures over seven years. Those can go as long as 30 years. Generally, the longer term of the bond, the higher risk of the bond being negatively impacted by rising inflation. Uh, also, rising interest rates can negatively impact most bonds, except for TIPS bonds, which benefit from rising inflation. So what happens if you buy a bond that pays off in 10 years, but two years into the term, you need your money back? Because we have bond markets where bonds are purchased and sold, Getting your money back long before the bond matures is actually very easy. However, you may not get 100% of your money back, depending on any changes in the credit worthiness of the company and changes in interest rates. Theoretically, if nothing has changed, interest rates are the same as when the bond was issued and the credit worthiness of the company is the same, you'd get all your money back. When you, when you sold it, meaning somebody would buy it from you as what's called par value or face value. This is another confusing aspect of bonds. Suppose you bought a thousand dollar 10 year bond at an interest rate of 6%. And after three years, you need to sell it. But bond interest rates are now 8%. Investors aren't going to pay the full thousand dollars for your 6% bond because you can get 8% by buying a new bond. So you'll need to sell at a discount. Conversely, if interest rates are 4%, you could sell at a premium, getting more than your $1,000 because buyers would want your bond 6% interest rate. 
You may also sell at a premium or a loss if the credit worthiness of the issuing company or country improves or declines. Buyers may be willing to receive less in interest in exchange for a bond's increased security, or they may want a higher return if the bond security has declined. And in that case, uh, they can eventually become uh, uh, a junk bond um, or a high yield bond. As I've uh, said before, bonds are an important part of a diversified portfolio, especially when that portion is further diversified into various types of bonds. For example, I like to have international bonds as a, as a third of my bond portfolio. An investment advisor can assist you in putting together a mix of domestic and international bonds that best supports your investment goals. So don't let the um, complexity scare you on the bonds. Um, once you get your head into it, they're not that uh, difficult to, to sort out. Thanks for joining me.